We're talking a little bit about the euro pairs. Uh, is it institutional? Well, um, let me just pull up the euro for a second in terms of uh, COT data. It's kind of mixed. Uh, at least we'll we'll see more uh, up to date updates on the COT data by um, by Monday. We usually get COT data. We get Tuesday's data on Friday each week. Uh, that's the way the commitment of traders report goes on. But we'll see, right? It's very mixed. So I'll be very curious to see if the euro specifically has a boost in uh, commitment of traders report numbers on Monday. When we check back, I'll definitely make sure to consider that when we look at um, the institutionals, because right now it's like very split, 54% to 45% uh, between long and short contracts that are open on the futures market from the commitment of traders. So that's not an incredibly thing. Now, if you look at the dollar, for example, um, and I'll come back to Ivan, we'll let Ivan add to this in just a second. I just want to finish this. So the dollar, right, 75% of institutional positioning is long. Now there has a, a has been a bit of a come down on that, uh, but we'll have to watch this closely and we'll have the most latest data uh, by Monday on the edge finder. So on the stream, we'll come back, talk about it. Ivan, what do you think with the, with the Euro? Is it an institutional play? Is this a bigger reversal than we, we talked about it a bit already. Um, I don't know. I, I think the Euro against certain pairs is, is really strong, like the Euro Aussie, Euro Kiwi, very very strong. What what's your thoughts on it? That's just Aussie and New Zealand being weak more than Euro being strong. But yeah. uh, if you look at retail traders, they are seventy two percent long on Euro. So that also makes us maybe believing that Euro should fall more. Um, but we have the to call it the the contradicting news this week is one of them is the election in in France, and the other one is the uh, the ECB members coming out and saying there's more likeliness of rate hikes earlier than expected. Those are bullish moves that also institutional traders will jump onto. But but right now, as it sounds right now, it doesn't seem like they have gotten anything. And mostly, why do I say that institutions aren't really taking the bait for the euro for the euro strength? Is because of this massive move yesterday. I don't know what it was for, because it was mentioned here that it was more likely to have interest rate hikes earlier. But what that was, I don't know what it was. The only thing it was is probably a pump and dump. Because how do you determine if a move? is a pump and dump is is very quickly without news is very quickly without any other substance other than it moves and it was the only one that moved and then also didn't move pound didn't move at the same great uh, at the same time and if you see here it comes down a hundred percent back down again that means well evidently now it's a pump and it's a pump and dump situation or manipulation whatever you're going to call it so it's not really um, doesn't have any substance to it. Yeah, but I was, yes. I I was played by it. Just thinking Sorry. that, just looking at that move, if you think about like how much money had to change hands and how fast it flew higher, like you said, the reaction to news, and then you just had these regimented, very strong selling candles that just came in. So that is concerning. It's kind of like, uh, you know, a lot of times you get these short term bursts. And when you see them erase very quickly, it's really concerning in terms of like uh, where the market sees it. it's like, OK, yeah, the excitement comes in, but then big players just shove it back down. Um you know, it'll be interesting to see how the, the euro does compared to some of the other crosses. We talked about the euro dollar kind of being a, a very interesting one. But then, you know, you got like euro CAD, euro GBP, things like that could also be interesting to watch going into next week. But the other question is, why is CAD so weak? Yeah, um, because they had a super strong CPI the other day or whatever it was. And I was like, this is going to go down. I can't remember which day it was. It's probably it's probably this day here, uh, as far as I remember. But it, the move is 100% dis dis disintegrated. It's, it's way back up again. Mm -hmm. um, so why, why would a market do that, you might ask, is one, has the market already priced this in? Two, are we going to see further 
rate hike from Bank of Canada. They've already priced in 50 basis point rate hike in the next meeting. Are we going to continue on? That's the that's the question you need to ask yourself. Are they going to do that next? Now, you need to probably, if you don't understand, if you don't know what to believe, you have to make up your opinion based upon bank reports or just thinking, yeah, okay, this is okay, or this is not okay. This is this is what a what would you do to make a, what would you do as a central banker to make the inflation go down? Because right now it's running wild. What would you do? And then make up your opinion about it. Right. Yep. And uh, the cat is a, a bit of a confusing one to me. That I think uh, the market is a very weird spot right now, especially when you look at like some of these moves on like JPY. I think, uh, you know, there is, I've been talking about this with the yen, and I think we both talked about this, Ivan, but um, this massive sell off on the yen, it will not end. You know, when it pops back the other direction, it's going to be vicious. It, it might not go, you know, all the way back up or anything like that. But and I and I'm not trying to call a bottom or or try and say, oh, it's going to do this. But I will say that I think that when these moves tend to correct, the correction can be really dangerous. So watching for breaks back the other direction can be really dangerous. So for example, here you had a massive slide on the yen, rallied right back up, massive slide on the yen, rallied back up, massive slide, rally back up. So it's, it's very hard to call the bottom on these sort of moves, but when they rally, they can be very, very aggressive. So be careful. I think a big uh, big thing right now, a lot of people are looking at yen pairs and um, looking for pullbacks on things like dollar yen. And, and granted, I want it too, but just be careful that you're not buying the very first pullback too aggressively, especially when we get something like, you know, the daily chart looks like incredibly strong. And again, maybe it continues longer, but when that reversal comes, I think it's going to be very aggressive and very ugly in the short term. So, I mean, what do you think on the yen pairs? Um, the moon. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, it, it, it's it's it's. Uh, we talked about it, pound yen uh, earlier today, and and he's turned. Uh, short-term bearish or yeah at least this move is is pretty hot it's pretty hot going down and i call that tp move it's when the market takes profit either short-term or long-term and you don't know where the bottom is it's very it's i call it the most dangerous trade to cry to try to get in here mm. because you don't know where where we're going to find buyers Buyers went out, but when when are they going to start initiating again? And that could be like a dead ba that's that's a a dead cat bounce, right? Is that going to happen again? When like it's a lot of questions and no answers, and it's not really in my books, not a very statistical good market to be to be trying to buy at least. Let's face it, if you're trading Forex without a winning trading plan, you're gambling. You need a model that is going to long-term net you a profit. Our team has put together a free guide on how you can actually create a trading plan. All you have to do is yeah. use the link down below in the description. Send the word template to our team on Telegram and we'll send you a copy. Again, hit the word template in your Telegram, send us a message and we'll get back to you with a copy of the free trading plan template.